The Workings of Prayer, Apostle Michael Arakpo Apostle Michael Arakpo often speaks deeply about spiritual matters, especially prayer. In his teachings, he emphasizes the importance of prayer as a means to access the divine, transform situations, and align oneself with God's will. His messages often highlight the workings of prayer in the following ways. Prayer is the foundation of spirit life. Eternal life, scriptures, fellowship will all be useless if you don't pray. Because it's in prayer that you actually engage the spirit that furnish these things into your spirit. If you are not engaging God vitally, everything God puts in you will become obsolete. You will not even know how to operate it. Every machine requires a manual to educate you on how to operate it. This is why many are sick, many are helpless. Whereas, everything they need for a glorious life is already in them. But they are not engaging God, so they don't know how to access those things. And so every spiritual truth I teach personally, I begin from the corridor of prayer. And so prayer is a weapon for the last days. A believer who is not praying is a victim. Please make no mistakes about it. The reason you are not yet victimized is probably because your schedule has not appeared on demonic calendars. The Bible said the devil is prowling like a roaring lion, seeking whom he will devour. So he is checking. He, he is not omniscient and he is not omnipresent. So he is not everywhere at the same time. The reason he has not come to you is because you are not yet on his schedule. The Bible spoke of an evil day. There is an evil day for everybody. But like I taught you here, if you are effectively fortified, your evil day becomes your day of manifestation. Because everything we call a testimony was actually designed to kill us. The reason it became a testimony is because we counteracted the forces of darkness. And one of the things that gives you a strategic advantage to subdue and to overcome the powers of the enemy is to be fortified with prayer. And this kind of prayer is not just, Father, I need bread. No, this is actually a prayer life. It's not a prayer with prayer points. And it's not a prayer to meet the target of time. It's a prayer weaved into your essence. In Luke 18 verse 1, he said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Three things of vital note. Number one, you ought to. That means it's a requirement. Number two is always. And number three is fainting. If you don't pray, you faint. And so the reason many are fainting is because prayer is not part of their lives. Yes, when they have a problem, they can engage God and pray. That's good. But that's not good enough. When there is a need, they can go to the prayer altar. That's good, but that's not good enough. A man who understands that he's in the last days, eats prayer, talks prayer, chew prayer, drinks prayer. In fact, every second of the day, he's vitally connected to God because that is where his strength is. I told you I was going to do the doctrine of power with you. When you begin to study power, there are many words for power. You have Iskus, you have Kraktos, you have Dunamis, you have Exousia, you have Anagazo, you have um, so many words. You have Megatos, you have Gagatos, there are so many words for power. But vitally speaking, there are four kinds of power you live with. And there's another power you use to deploy people into God's kingdom. The power you use to deploy people into God's kingdom is called Anakazo. There is a technology for building an akazo. The technology for building an akazo is to come into the experience of what you say. If you, are not, if you have not experienced what you say, you can't convict people. You may impress people, they may clap, but conviction will never be formed. This is why God carries us into realms in the spirit. So when we come out, we become custodians of the things we talk about. He said the things that we were from the beginning, which we heard, which we looked upon, and our hands handled of the word of life. He said, that is what we've come to commit to you. He said, for our fellowship is with the Father. So they have heard it and they have handled it. Now that they've handled it, they have the power to bring others into it. So Anakazo is built from experience. However, there are other kinds of power you need to live your life for and to live your life with. Dunamis and Kratos are two of such powers. Dunamis is a potential power that was predicted into your spirit when you received the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, Not many days from now you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. 
and you shall be witnesses unto me. The word power there is the word dunamis. But there is a way dunamis works. Dunamis has to become a dynamic power. The light you see here does not exist actually. This light is a product of what the generator is doing. Now the power was in the generator. But the generator had to be started for the light to appear. And so everybody who carries God carries power on his inside. But it will take engagement or prayer for that power to be activated. That's why I said God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that is at work on your inside and so when a man begins to build a life of prayer what happens to him is that he migrates from dunamis into kratos that man is a man who can generate power and use power any day anytime see the way dunamis works if i'm coming for a meeting for example if i pray for 10 hours i would have prayed through because I have prayed through, if I see deafness, I can command it to open. Because I have prayed through, if I'm talking, people will fall down. What have I done? I have engaged dunamis temporarily. And so there is a prevailing prayer where you pray through and mobilize dunamis. But if you want dunamis to become a natural operation in your life, you must pray consistently. Praying consistently is different from praying through. So the kind of prayer we are talking about for the last day is not to pray through. If my son is sick, I can pray through and address that sickness. If there is a challenge with my business, I can pray through and address that business. But if I am always waiting to correct things, I will spend my whole life correcting what the devil is destroying. And so the best way to live life instead of correcting is to live in a realm where they don't happen. And so a man who prays through corrects the problem. But a man who lives praying stops the problem from happening so i don't waste my time correcting things things don't go wrong around my ecosystem that's what prayer life does in the last day and this is why prayer becomes a weapon there is somebody who is about to be attacked by by demons he prays through and addresses it there's somebody who is about to be attacked with sickness he prays through and addresses it but there's somebody else that demons tell themselves don't go there if you go there you'll be in trouble because of what he carries even when he's unconscious power is moving did you not read about jesus when the woman with the issue of blood came jesus was not aware but he is a man of prayer and so when the woman touched him virtue flowed out of him that was when jesus discovered that virtue had left him and he turned and said who touched me jesus was not aware that the woman was coming but there was enough there was enough to flow out and so every time you can be sleeping power will be moving Power don't only move when you say in the name of Jesus. If you start living a life of prayer, you become the believer Jesus spoke about in John 7, 38. He said, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living waters. So power begins to issue out of you. And so a man who wants to have strategic advantage in the last day must give himself to prayer and pray without ceasing. This is how to survive in the last day. And this thing does not end here. Because that power is also a synergistic power. What it means is, when you start praying, you begin to connect with the heavenlies. And so there are many things you are not aware of, but heavenly entourage is working on your account. Did you not read about Daniel? After he fasted and prayed for 21 days, the Bible said Gabriel appeared to him. And he said, I was made to fly swiftly, to come and give you skill and understanding. And so the prayer Daniel was praying, even though he was not aware, was mobilizing something in the heavenlies. And so Revelation chapter 5 verse 8, he said the prayers of the saints, they ascend to heaven as others and they are stored in golden vials. And so when a man is praying, he's creating a spiritual account in the heavens. That's why things cannot happen to that man. That man may be on a way, on his way going to school and God is telling him, go and invest in gold. Others may have met experts who have read the times for him but this man because of his prayer heaven is addressing matters on his account because the prayers of the saints they are as others they are stored in golden fire and so if you want to have an advantage in the last day prayer is not something you pray because they call for prayer prayer is how you breathe prayer is how you live and you will notice that the greatest attack on the believer in the last day it's either in the area of purity or intimacy because the devil knows if you build intimacy through prayer 
you become like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. And so when church encourages you to pray, it's an advantage. Don't wait to be motivated to pray. If you have the opportunity to pray, embrace it, catch it, and treasure it. Because there are many battles around your destiny that you are not aware of. Did you not read in Psalm 91 from verse 1? It says, Him that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say of his God, You are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I shall trust. He said, You are my shield and my buckler. And he went further to begin to reveal some things to us from verse 7. He said, A thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand. He shall not come near you. With your eyes you shall see and behold the recompense of the wicked. Why is it so? He said, Because you have made God, even the most high, your habitation. So when you are praying, you are dwelling under the shadows of the Almighty. And he said, Because you have done that, no evil shall come near you. And Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. He said, Yes, there will be famine. But he said, Hot not the oil and the wine. The man that travels in prayer, what he's doing is to stir the wine, to stir the oil. The oil speaks of the overflowing anointing. And because that man has given himself to prayer, there is a royal decree in heaven. Touch not that one. That's why I say, touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. One of the ways you keep yourself in the last day is through the force of prayer. Prayer is a weapon. It's not just to ask God for things. It's an insurance system in the spirit. When a man begins to pray, he becomes like a naked wire. Touch him at your own risk. Touch him at your peril. And even when he's not aware, there are forces working on his account that even himself doesn't know about. There are many persons you touch, things happen to you they don't know. You are the one who come back to confess. I heard a testimony somebody shared in living faith. The neighbor took his shoe, went and did charm, and brought the shoe. They say, if the day she wears it, that's all. And this lady woke up the next day, not aware of what happened. And she wore the shoe. <laughs> there's a time, there's a level you, you build to. God will tell you, don't touch the shoe. But there's another level you get to. God tells you, wear it. By the time you wear it and nothing happened, that one now is the wonder realm of life. They'll now look at you. He's supposed to fall now. The hour that they calibrated from the demonic coven that you are supposed to faint, that's when you are now doing praise and worship. They are now checking from the window for you to shout and say, help me, help me. Then they now hear something that looks like a shout. They are, they are about to open their door. Then you are singing. I have a very big God who, who is always by my side. A very big God who by my side, by my side. When you are going to walk, you now say, hey brother, how are you doing? He will look at you like this. Sometimes when you greet people and they don't answer, there are things that happen that you are not aware of. Hello, how are you doing? You are coming back from work with bread. That's why he said, I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and we are for wonders. He said, say unto Zacharias and them that sit with him, you are men wonder that. That's the age that we have come into. But for us to activate those elements, prayer must come to the foundation. And so when a man is praying, he's fortifying himself. When a man is praying, he's mobilizing synergistic support from realms beyond the times. Ah!